welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number eight, which is called the Luxurious Lantern. And um, I think I'll actually show you what it makes first because, I mean, it's such a giant gift box that it's kind of difficult to tell what it's going to look like. This is basically half of it, and you cut this main big piece twice, and then you get this beautiful, massive lantern box which is really really lovely and it is about three and a half inches square around the bottom so a really decent sized box and really nice and tall as well it is six inches tall up to this point here and then you've got the extra bit from the slight sort of sloping sides of the triangle or the pyramid sorry going at the top so um really really decent sized gift box and it well it, i mean it's called a luxurious lantern i have actually made um this one and the two others that i'll show you at the end that are going to be constructions um i've made them all solid but you could cut the detail into the actual box as well if you wanted to put um a battery operated candle inside or like um a spool of those little fairy lights on the wire or i mean you could mix that in with like um dried flowers or something knitted in there or all sorts of different ideas that you could kind of put inside here if you made it so that you could see through but I think just having it solid makes just a really lovely large gift box as well but obviously you don't just have to make this gift box with it um, I'm going to show you a construction that's practically this but I want to try and make it so that the bottom is the top and then I will make this part flat so I'm going to see if that will work out you'll see that at the end of the video and then also you can actually make a box from just one of these as well rather than having the two of them together so I'm also going to construct that for you as well I haven't constructed either of those yet so um, hopefully they'll work but we'll be constructing it together to see how um, it'll go together. So um, stick around right till the end to see um, the constructions. I have a feeling this video will be a long one because I tend to talk for ages about the dies and then I've got samples to show you and two constructions. So sorry if it's like an, an hour long kind of a video, but hopefully it'll just give you some ideas of other ways to put this box together or also just other ways of using the patterned panels as well. So I thought I'd actually show you the, the, what it actually makes first um, in this video and then we can have a big close-up look at the die set so this oh obviously it's a showcase die set so it comes with the actual popper wallet and the magnetic sheet and then this fits in the a4 storage folders that tonic do but it also um you know works really nicely on a bookshelf as well you can stack them all next to each other you don't actually have to have them in a binder or if you have um any binders that have the four rings in England or in the UK it's it's often hard to find ones that have the four rings um, you could put it in just a two ring one as well it would work in just a two ring one but it might not be as stable because these are quite heavy um, inside the folder but I, I tend to just um, have them on my bookcase and it works really well you can even use like magazine files that have the open front to them um, and slide them in them to keep them up straight as well so um, different ways of storing it but this is the actual die set and you can see this is the main die that creates that lantern I just showed you you cut it twice to create the one a big lantern so obviously you're going to need at least two sheets of A4 card to make the base of the box and then plus whatever extra you want to do for your panels unless you're cutting into the box then you know you can kind of get away with just two sheets of card if you wanted to if you were going to cut straight into it um, but you can also make a box just with one of these as well and to show you the size this is my A4 cutting plate from my tangerine and you can see um, it w obviously it will go through your A4 machines but actually I should get a piece of card to show you here's an actual A4 piece of card which you can see fits on the A4 plate. So the A4 plate is slightly bigger than A4 just to accommodate for um, the US sized paper and stuff. So you can see how it will fit on really nicely onto an A4 sheet. So you haven't got that much waste either. You could shift it over to one side, then you'll have like a long strip and a couple of rectangles left pretty much. So um, it's quite an economical box I mean I know you have to use two sheets to make it but there's not much waste from the two sheets so you know it's quite a good one and the decorative um, panels these ones 
this shaped one which goes on uh, you need four of these to decorate the box you see it's kind of a confusing looking box because the way they've um, made it this is actually one of the panels that this will stick to but it's in half because you then stick it to this side when you have the two of them together um, this one will join onto this side to create a whole place for this large panel so you do need four of these panels to decorate the box unless you're just doing one made from one of these pieces and then you just need the two but this piece here you can you have to be quite frugal and um, you know cut quite small pieces of card for the die to fit on but you can just about get um, four of these panels from one sheet of A4 and the way you do it is you'd cut this one and then you move the die up and cut the next one so that um, kind of the pointy part from this is sort of going into where that dip part is and vice versa down here and then you can cut the next one here and the next one up here and then you can get all four panels from one piece of card and you also have enough left um, to get your triangles out of that as well so the, the four triangles that would decorate the top of the box you can get all four of these panels and the four triangles out if you're um, economical with the way you place your dies and stuff onto a piece of A4 so that's pretty good to know so the basic panels that decorate the box I've kind of gone through it a little bit but it's this funny sort of bowed inwards shape which also fits really lovely on a card um, this actually is the absolute perfect length for my favourite small card which um, is just really you know lucky that it's that kind of size so it is actually five and a half inches tall so it works perfectly on your cards and looks really lovely with this kind of cinched in side piece as well um, and then to go in this panel you have two different decorative pieces that you can use so you have this full piece here which actually has has a heart within the design which you can cut out and decoupage up if you want to and it is mirrored so you have two hearts one's upside down one's up the right way unless you used it landscape on a card then they'd both be sideways um, or you can just cut the hearts out and use them but as well as having this pattern you also have this pattern which you just cut twice so you would um, what I did was I took the outside shape and that one um, taped them together and run that through and then you can just take this die out and finish cutting it on um, this like plain end of the die cut shape as well. And then you have the perfect doubled up design, uh, which I will show you a little bit later on, on one of the boxes that I've got ready to um, construct for you as well. So that is like the decoration for the main panel. Then you have two different decorations for the triangular portion of the box. You've got this one up here which um, is really nice. It kind of gives this arch to the top of this design with a lovely little um, swirly kind of element within there and also almost um, sun rays coming out the top as well and this little piece it could be like a boomerang. It almost looks like a little boomerang that bit that would fall out. Um, so that's one design and this one has a straight cutting edge on it just like the main large panel and then this one down here has the straight cutting edge but with a quite spread out dot detail and then you have this pattern to go in there so it's almost like a bit of a latticey design with some swirls and almost a almost a kind of flower at the top there as well. Um, which all, all of the designs sort of emulate each other so you can mix and match them really nicely together and then for the side panels of the box where it sort of curves in a little bit to go along with this sort of shape you ha again have two one of them has just the plain edge cutting um, straight edge on it and then this one has the straight edge with those spaced out um, perforated kind of dots on it as well and then there's two gorgeous designs that go in there I really like this one with that diamond in the middle really really pretty and they're all like symmetrical kind of design so everything works really nicely together and gives that um, elegant kind of look with that symmetricalness um, and then you've also got this kind of design here which also it's got quite quite nice shapes inside it that you could trim out as well so I mean you could just trim that diamond out and decoupage that up like with the heart or there's almost like an oval um, portion in that decoration there that you could trim out and decoupage up and then I mean this has got it's almost got a kind of really stylized fleur de lis sort of hidden in there um, and also like these kind of curved designs you could paper piece them in different ways um, to bring out you know different parts of the design as well all of them would be really nice for paper piecing um, and this one's got some relatively large areas in which would be nice and easy and in here actually you also have like a little scalloped border so, um, you know, if you ever need a scalloped border for a card, you could trim that piece out and have a small little scalloped border die as well. Then, 
Um, you also get a tag in here too. So it's in two separate parts. So you have the main tag, which cuts out a gorgeous tag shape, a really lovely one actually, um, with the hole. So you don't even have to like place an extra die or find a hole punch. You actually get the hole in there perfectly. And then this is the only die that I didn't use out of the entire die set. Um, and it is basically just a matte and layer to go on the tag. But it has these two rectangles in it because there are six different words that you could emboss into this. You can do them just in uh, pairs of words to make up a sentiment or you can even do um, three words together and still get some sentiments out with that as well. Um, obviously you wouldn't be able to quite fit them in this little tag but you can make up sentiments with three words in. So you've got um, with love, you've also got best wishes and then you've got special friend and you've also got happy birthday. Did I say six? I meant eight. I can't remember what I said now but I meant eight. Um, words that you get. So I really love that you get all of these words and they are the debossing dies so they will, um, you just run them through with your normal die cutting sandwich and they will deboss quite heavily actually those letters into the card for you and then there's multiple different ways of um, picking that detail back out. You can either trace into them with I found a 0 0.6 point pen works perfectly um, or you can rub like embellishment mousse over the top and because it's quite nice and raised it won't go into the little um, depressed details so it kind of makes the words stand out. Um, I was actually using the back of a piece of cut and dry foam so this um, black side of it and then squishing out some of the ink from a Nouveau glitter marker you can tell because that's really glittery and then swiping that over the top of the um, the die cut it did go into the the deboss details but then I just traced back over it with a white gel pen and I think that turned out really nicely so there are lots of different ways of doing it and I've, I've said before if you deboss them into mirror card um, it's kind of legible instantly because of the way that the mirror card is reflecting so that's another nice thing to know so I'll move this out the way and then I will show you the samples that I've done and we'll get on to the construction as well Okay, so the first sample is a completely finished luxur luxurious lantern, um, really, really pretty, gorgeous, large sized gift box. And then I've done a little gift tag to go on it. And instead of doing um, the horizontal gift tag with embossing the words in as you've kind of got the guide to put those dies in when you die cut it, um, I decided just to emboss the dies and snip them out separately. And you can see how legible that is. That is swiping over with the glitter marker and then tracing down into the details with a white gel pen. And it works really, really nicely. And then I've just added them to um, a couple of little gift tags offset from each other, little scraps of card to tie it all in, all the different colours that I've used in the box as well. And then to attach this gift tag, I've actually just, um, so you get these whole portions in the top. The way the top can go together is you have a triang triangular piece on each side with these scalloped pieces. You can uh, push these scalloped pieces inside so that you just have like um, a square based pyramid on the top of the box. Um, or you can put them upwards like this and then you have the hole showing and you can thread ribbon or twine through to hold the box shut. Um, but also you can use those holes to attach your tag onto as well. So I've just uh, gone through one side of one hole so that you can still open the box without having to remove the tag, which is really nice. And then um, I've just done this with ribbon, uh, not ribbon, twine. And the way I did it... I don't know if you can tell if I zoom in a little bit. So the way I did it is I went all the way around the box and then I tied a knot here and then I thread both pieces back over to here and then came back over to here and tied another knot so that it pulled it really tightly. I'll thread it back up again in a second to show you uh, what I mean. If you just have the um, knot on this side, it does hold it together nicely, but I felt like I wanted it to be a bit more secure, so I'll show you that in a second. But basically, you can pull that um, twine out, and then if I zoom out again, you can see how nicely and how big that is inside. You could even cut an extra square of card um, to cover the inside of that as well if you wanted to, or you can uh, 
put the flaps of the base down differently so that you would have a solid square at the bottom. I did put the little flaps in first but you could have put one big square then the little flaps on and then the other big square if you wanted to as well but um, really really decent sized box and you can open the top of it really nice and wide so that you can get a large gift in there uh, which is really lovely. So going back to what I was just saying about um, doing up the box, see having the twine like that works really nicely but I wanted it to be sort of a little bit more secure so what I did, actually I'm just going to make this a little bit more even before I do it again so I don't have to undo it and tie it up again so you just want to make sure the twine is even so you've got it going through there and you've got like even lengths here then you tie your first knot and then you take this piece over the top, thread it under that last or the opposite sort of piece that's going through the holes and then bring it back over to this side and I just feel like that holds it together really nicely and then you can tie another knot on this side um, just to pull it tightly. You're just doing a single knot so it can easily be undone and then you can do your loose bow on here as well. Obviously if you're using ribbon you'd have a nicer more prominent kind of bow on there but I think that looks really nice like that so that is the gorgeous luxurious lantern and then obviously I can't um, show you a 3D die set without showing you some card examples as well so my sped up video for this month's showcase is showing you these three cards so I really enjoyed making these actually and I was just using scraps from my scrap box and um, hence the yellow and green kind of colour scheme. I might not have actually gravitated towards yellow and green and gold but um, I think they look really nice and that's why the box ended up being yellow and green because I thought I might as well make it to match one of the cards. So it's actually kind of matching this card however I didn't decoupage up the hearts on the box but you could easily take what I've done here and transfer it onto the box and make it a little bit more um, fancy with some decoupaged elements. Obviously you would have to do this with eight hearts to do the whole box so it would be a little bit time consuming or you could just do it on the front of the box and then people know where the front is. Or and actually I should say as well because the two panels join um, you have two joins. You have one join down one side, one join down the other. So when you're decorating the box, just think about where the joins are and try and make the front panel one that hasn't got a join, just so it's you know it's not visible. Um, if you're looking at the box from the front, you can't see the join in the cardstock. Not that it is very visible. I mean, it's a tiny little bit down here and a little bit up here. It's not really visible once you've stuck the panel on. But um, I've been trying to make... Um, a side that doesn't have a join on it to be the front and the back of the box so thought I'd say that as well then these are the three cards that I created so I was trying to show you all the different um, dies from the set and like different ways of how you can make them into cards so this one is probably the simplest just using that main panel but you can see how perfectly it fitted top to bottom on my card I didn't have to trim anything off that at all um, I also decided I wanted some extra darkness around the edge once I'd finished the card um, so I cut this one again from dark green with the detail and the solid but thinking about it now um, originally I wanted a skinny piece to sort of come further out here but when I cut it like use my scissors to cut along it I cut a little bit wonky um, so to be honest I could have just cut the solid one and trimmed a bit off and tucked it under and that would have been much easier because I've got like a little gap here where I, and over here as well where I'd cut it a little bit wonky but it's not too noticeable from far away so I'm hoping it, you know you don't really notice it Um, this was watercolouring with some glitter marker because I'd done the glitter marker technique over the top of these words as well and I had some left on my mat so I just watered it down and did some curved lines I had this panel sat on the card whilst I did the curved lines so that I could get them in you know a similar kind of place to where the die cut would be and then I've just decoupaged up the hearts on here so I die cut the uh, decorative piece I actually just put two scraps of that dark green card over the two hearts trimmed around the hearts then stuck that onto yellow card trimmed around that then I die cut um, again with little scraps of card the um, Inca gold cardstock and pieced in this kind of ribbon piece that goes around here and then again I used a couple more scraps and die cut um, some green mirror card to do the little hearts on the actual hearts as well just to give it a little bit of an extra um, you know paper piece kind of a look and I also splatted on some of the 
glitter marker as well when it was more at its full strength I splattered a bit of that on so that was that card then this one is really simple just using three of those gorgeous pointy shapes I really love these shapes and I actually used these two are the same and this one's the different one in the middle and I changed how I put them on the card so these ones are stuck flat to the green card or the green card stock is stuck flat to the mirror card but I've used um, a narrow 3D foam to build it off the card and I've done that for both the outside ones and then the inside one I've used the narrow 3D foam between the intricate green die cut and the gold mirror card and then I've used a, a thicker foam to stick it to the card so it's got a little bit of difference in dimension between them which I thought was quite nice it just adds like a little bit of extra visual interest um, and then again I've done the same thing for the sentiment using that uh, back of that cut and dry foam and a glitter marker and spreading it out over the top and then using a white gel pen to pick the detail back out so really nice simple um, quite a nice masculine sort of card as well and I think with the green colours it kind of looks like um, long skinny leaves as well which is quite nice um, so I did that one and then I finally did this one as well I wanted to incorporate these triangles and I've, I use the triangle pieces a lot when there's triangle ones in um, three-dimensional box die sets however this triangle is different because um, there are four of them to make the sort of square base pyramid that goes on the top they're not actually equilateral triangles they're actually isosceles so um, the bottom length of them is longer than the two side lengths uh, so they're not at a right angle at the top so um, when you put them on the card I'd say put them higgledy piggledy like this because you can't really tell that that's not a right angled triangle um, you know it just looks quite nice with them all sort of falling down the card and you don't really notice the angles are off if you try to line them up um, like I've done in the past where I've sort of done one like this one up the other way um, it's really noticeable because the angles are, are off so um, I just sort of did a scattering down the card like that and then I put this piece across here which actually when you just see one you could turn that into a surfboard or something as well um, for anybody who loves surfing you could do a stylized kind of card um, you know emulating that kind of feel of it being a surfboard um, and then I wasn't quite keen on this card I, I, you'll probably see in the sped up video I was kind of faffing around with it for a while it wasn't really um, coming out how I'd imagined it so I ended up adding these little thin strips of card coming out at like different angles from that central section and I quite like it now so um, just a different kind of idea just using thin strips of card cut with your guillotine to create a different kind of look coming off of um, a central element and then for the sentiment on this one I just traced the deboss detail with a glittery gel pen so um, I thought that would just be a different way of showing you how to do it as well so that is the third card and then I'll get on to showing you the construction so I've got all of the pieces already done to save me some time um, for doing this flat top kind of box that I want to have a go at see if I can make the bottom of the box the top of the box and have it be a magnetic square lid that opens and then this one I'm going to do is just going to be one piece of the box so I might do this one first because it'll be quicker to do so I've literally just taken one piece of this box but I've cut pieces off of it so if I show you the actual die and put this back on top you can see where I, I have snipped pieces off of it actually it's this way up isn't it so um, I have snipped off these two pieces here because I want this to be a triangular flap that folds down on the back and I've left the holes so that I can still use a twine closure for it as well but I've cut off these two because I don't need them because it's just going to interfere with this but another way of making this box you could make it so the box is this shape with the triangle on top and have those two pieces still on there as well as another alternative and then for the bottom I have cut most of this square off but left a glue tab which I've added some adhesive to and then on these two glue tabs I've cut them at an angle here and slightly shorter as well because I don't want them to interfere with this curved piece here so I've just cut them so that they're not going to be in the way when I fold this all round um, it's not going to be interfering with this portion of the box because being that square shape they were like sort of not letting you fold it all the way around so they, those are the pieces that I've snipped off of this to try and create this box which I hope will work now I'm telling you how to make it 
but my idea is that this will fold round and then you'll glue that piece together just like you would on the actual large box but we're going to stick those so that it will stick onto there fold this tab up so that it will stay stuck and then we can decorate this panel and then this will be our lid closure so that it will be this kind of shape of a box so I think it's going to work so let's give it a go So we'll take this piece off first. Oh, and also, on the first one that I made, um, I did actually fold these lines, but you don't need to. So basically, this fold line that is in there next to the glue tab is just um, to give you a guide of where this piece sticks to. So it's not actually a fold line. You don't actually have to crease this one. You can leave it flat as it is. So we're going to pull this round and line it up. And then because we're kind of in mid-air, you're going to sort of want to try and pinch from the inside as much as you can as well. And even, I mean, you can just reach into that central section inside, which is good. If you can't, um, just take your glide folder and press against your hand and press that um, glue tab down on the inside. Then we're going to try and fold these two flaps under and then we're going to stick this so that that will become the bottom of the box. This could even be a glasses case. Can you imagine? Because it should still open like that at the top even though when we've closed it. You could actually, it could be like um, an eco-friendly glasses case or something. That would be really cool. Huh. Yeah, I think a pair of glasses would, would fit in there. Especially because it gets bigger at the edges. Yeah, I think that would be a really cool idea, actually. Okay, anyway. Um, so, if we take the tape off of these, and I think I might put some glue on these as well, just in case they try to uh, grab in the wrong place. So, just put a smidgen of glue on there. And then we can tuck them both under. And then push this up to that score line. So I'm looking at the score line that's inside there and then we'll push it right up against that and then press together. I think that will do for pressing it together but if you want it to be extra secure you could go from the inside and poke it with your glide folder or your card creaser just to get a good connection. And then we can fold this flap over. It might not need this flap, but I just thought um, the decorative panel is going to hide that anyway, so it doesn't really matter um, if we're adding that on. So we can just literally fold that up and glue that into place. So this is looking pretty promising as a cool box design. Uh, you might want to use tape on these panels. I did actually use glue, um, and they're kind of buckling a little bit in places so you might want to use um, tape to make sure they're really nicely stuck on and I have actually put tape on this one to stick it on so that it will hold really nicely on that curve so you just want to sort of curve it a little bit so that it helps it go round the curve of the box as well and then I've kind of gone overboard with the tape but you want to get it as close up to the edges as you can so that it's really going to hold those corners in place but I mean if a corner is peeling up you can just get like your fine tip glue bottle and squirt a little bit underneath and hold it down so I think we go from the bottom of the box and then just line that up and stick it down yay I think that worked really well so it does make a really lovely, like a glasses case, kind of a little box. Really nice. Or for a few small chocolates. And you can still, um, you know, do the squeeze box kind of thing and get into it to put a, a gift in there. And then that is going to be the closure for it. However, I wanted to do it so that we could add some twine through it. So I've got some blue twine here. And I'm hoping this will work. Because we've got the two holes there, I'm thinking we should be able to thread that one through that hole, then take it back around the box and thread this one up through this hole, and then pull this flap down, yeah it's going to work, and then we can just tie this 
into a bow as well. Oh, should have made sure that was even. Okay, that's better. So we can tie that into a just a single knot so that someone can undo it easily. And then do a little bow. So again, ribbon would look neater for a bow because it would be more sort of prominent and pronounced. And they are uh, reasonably large holes on this um, die set as well. So it would easily accommodate some ribbon in there. I just don't have that much ribbon. so And I, I quite like the look of the twine. So that's why I tend to lean towards twine more often. So that is our cute little gift box just using one piece of the die set rather than the two pieces together um, which just makes a nice little change so you can go from something that th that is this enormous to something like this it really does change the size of it it's really cool so um yeah I thought I would show you that it's a nice little alternative kind of box that you can make and I do think that would fit a pair of glasses in it um yeah I think that's pretty cool so um I've shown you that one and then I'll show you this one as well, trying to turn the box upside down basically and give it a square lid with a magnetic closure I'm going to try because um, I think that would work quite nicely. So I've got all of these pieces cut. Um, I can show you the difference between the two panels as well. This is the panel that cuts completely with the two hearts on and then this is the panel that you double cut. Sorry it's not that contrasting uh, with the colours but um, it's basically the same design cut twice and you can snip little bits out in the middle if you want it to look uh, more cohesive like I still had a tiny little strip running across the middle so I just snipped it out so I've got a diamond and two triangles on the edges there. So for this box to create one that's the same size as that big one I just showed you I have got two of these pieces like this. Goodness me, I've got to zoom out more. Okay, so we've got two of these pieces like this and then you want to put the tape on these glue tabs down the sides but you will also want to put the tape on these bottom pieces and bottom glue tabs if you're doing this version with the triangles at the top but because I'm showing you um, my attempt at doing a different version um, I've left any of those places without tape um, just because I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do it yet so um, let's start sticking this box together so actually before you stick it together you want to pre-fold everything um, obviously if you're using the scalloped triangular pyramid top you would uh, pre-fold these pieces as well but I'm planning on folding them all flat and making that the bottom of the box um, and putting a square piece over the top so I haven't actually scored them on this one or pre-folded them. Uh, I've pre-folded everything except one of these, these ones. So the hardest one to pre-fold is these curved lines. And I'm hoping if I show you on camera, I, it might help you um, to figure out how to do it. I mean, you're basically just bending the card, but you're kind of um, fiddling around with it to try and get it to go around a curve. If you see how I do it, it might help you uh, figure out how to do it. But um, it's, I mean, it's not too difficult, but it's just a little bit, um, I don't know, counterintuitive or something because you're not really used to scoring or folding on a curved line. You're usually uh, doing it straight and then you can use a bone folder to reinforce it. But that is basically how you get those curved pieces. And you can see how just the one side of it creates that box that I just showed you how to make, which is really lovely. And you just got to trim off the extra bits that you don't need. So to do the full box, um, again, you don't have to pre-fold these glue tab pieces. Um, I did on the first one because I wasn't really thinking about how it went together um, but definitely uh, leave them flat if you want, like if you can because these are going to stick together and this is going to be a flat panel which becomes one of these panels with that decoration on so you don't need it to be folded. So we can take these off and stick this together. And we can also put the decorative panel on this while it's flat as well. And yeah, this is where I was saying about um, making sure you 
pick one of the solid panels as your front and back so I'm planning on this being the front this being the back or vice versa depending how I think it looks when I finish it and then I've got two identical pieces for the sides and I've done them just with the half piece and then put a little bit of the um, iridescent mirror card down the middle so we can now stick this one on however I want this to be at the bottom and I'm making this the top of the box so I must remember to stick them on up the other way and I've just put um, again a load of tape on the back of it you could do wet glue as well but I wasn't sure whether I was going to stick these on after the box was 3D or not so I think if you're going to stick them on when the box is already made which you have to do for the last panel um, but with that little one like I showed you how it was already curved I think definitely uh, tape or, or a combination of tape and glue is better because you're trying to stick it to a curved surface and you'd be there for a while trying to hold um, a panel if you just use glue I think so remember I want this to be the top so I've got to put it up this way and that perfectly covers up that join so that you can't see it and then <clears throat> the next piece is to bring the whole box around and just sort of tease it round with those curved lines bringing the shape of the box together and then you'll find that these two sides will meet up nicely and then I think I'm going to do this in two separate pieces so we can stick this one together first so we can bring that round and line it up a little bit fiddly to do the last one because you haven't got anything to press against but it is doable I could have um, put some wet glue on that as well to make it um, a little bit easier but it's gone together quite nicely and then you can press together from the inside and from the outside and then you can stick the last triangle together I'm not 100% sure if this is really necessary if I'm going to make this the bottom of the box but I might as well stick it together anyway and then the final piece to go on the top make sure I've got that the right way it's going to go this way so I can take all the tape off of this one and put this one on as well and you can use um, just the normal like tissue tape or you can use your red liner high tack tape as well for sticking your panels on um, you know just whatever you've got to hand really see I think oh I've got that stuck to me I think that smaller box that I made has actually got more of a curvature on it because you're just making it with one panel and it's got more to fold around whereas this it's got a curve on it but it's not a massive curve if I hold this next to it you can see how this is more like a pillow box with a proper curve on it which is why I use the high tack tape but this one hasn't got such a dramatic curve on it so you can get away with just the tissue tape on this one and then you can stick that on there and press from the inside to get it to stick down really nicely as well okay so I want that to be the top so I'm going to deal with the bottom of the box first so I think I can just get away with sticking all of these down and then I have cut, I was using the dash and dot squares that Tonic do, I'm not sure if you can get them anymore but um, any square dies will do, you should have something in your stash that would be the right kind of size I could have gone one bigger as well but I thought I'd just go with this and I've just layered up a couple of them together so this is going to be a bit tricky to get it to actually be square but maybe if you line the holes up will that make it square yeah I think if I make sure I line the holes up that should make it nice and square so this interior piece I'm going to get a little bit of red liner tape and just place it on this point here and then I'm going to fold the first two down and try and line up those holes oh, I'm going to have to press from the inside as well there we go so if you line up those holes and then I think if I do the same this direction that should give it a nice square base to the box and then that should fit on nicely to cover it up so for this we can actually add some extra tape on here to make it a bit more secure so I'm going to use a narrower red liner tape 
probably a six millimeter one and um, just add some strips of this so I mean now you know where I'm adding this tape you could add this on before you start assembling it but I've not made one of these before so I wasn't 100% sure where I wanted to put the tape yet so I didn't want to put it in the wrong place Okay, I think that's going to be good. And I'm just going to take all of the tape off, I think, because I want to line the holes up with each other. I think it's going to be easier if they're both ready to go. And then we can fold this one and fold that one. There we go. And then you can just press down from the inside to get them to stick nicely. And again, you could cut um, a square from your guillotine to put inside to hide um, the workings on the inside as well. And you could even put a square of white on the outside to hide the workings. But I'm just going to go with a decorative panel because I don't think anybody's really going to look at the bottom of the box. Okay, so can put that on there and that just finishes off the bottom and then for the top of the box I want to make it a magnetic closure so we've got these small little tabs that can go inside to just support the top of the box we could just leave them as they are and then we want this one to come over the top and then this one to stick down so I need to put one magnet like here so let's get a couple of magnets I'm kind of running out of the sort of magnets that I'll need. I need to get some more. Ooh. Okay, two magnets there. Oh, goodness. So, I need to put one magnet here. So we can get a piece of red liner tape. And put that about there. Actually, it might be easier to put the one on the inside first. Okay, so I'm going to put a piece of tape hmm, about there. This one I'm probably just going to leave unhidden. But I'm, I mean off camera, I might just cut a square to hide it. But if we put that one on first, so that's the inside flap. We push that one over. And then we pull this one down and we see where the magnet needs to go and it will clip itself on there for us because I've already put that tape on there. And then we can just put this decorative panel over the top to finish off the top of the box. And I think I'm going to put a little dollop of glue just on the top of the magnet to make sure that that has got some adhesive to stick to on the back of the card. And then we can lift this up and press this down nicely. And then as a decoration for the top, um, so when I was cutting all the pieces, I kind of forgot that I was going to do the flat topped version. So I cut all of the triangle pieces, which is why I used two triangles to decorate this side. This one's just one cut in half. And then I have two left. So I could put these on the top of the box somehow, like to that way or like this maybe, because they're not right angled triangles, you kind of got to think of a way placing them on there that doesn't look too weird with the angles being off from each other, but I might just stick the gift tag on the top, so we could do, oh it look, kind of looks like a butterfly then, we could do something like that actually, I think that would look nice. So let's get some 3D foam and we can just put a big square behind each of these. And then try and put it so the triangles are sticking out sort of evenly. Like that. And then the other one. So when I'm placing that, I'm looking at these two kind of sticking out evenly and this kind of being more of an actual 
equal sort of triangle because it doesn't matter about this point because we're going to cover it with the tag yeah I think that'll look good and then I want to put a little bit of twine on the tag so which twine's going to look nicer hmm I think maybe the teal coloured one so just get a small piece of that because this is just decorative it's not actually um, going to be attached to anything So we can put that on there and then we can stick that tag on top using some more foam. So if we want to make it raised up as well, we can put a piece of foam here and here to make that the same height and then put foam on the back of the tag as well and maybe even extra little pieces to go on top of the triangles. Actually, which way was going to be the front so I guess it doesn't really matter but maybe I'll do it this way around okay so that is what that's gonna look like it does look like a butterfly it's quite nice and then I wanted to show you the wording that I'd done as well so I picked three words for this one so I've got happy birthday and then friend and you can see how you can hardly read friend because I haven't traced over it in white gel pen yet because I wanted to show you how I did it so this was using the Arctic Blast Arctic Blast Nouveau Glitter Marker um, spreading that over the top of the debossed piece to look like this so if you were really careful you probably could get it to leave behind the letters but um, I found it was just, you know, there was still patches so I might as well just, you know, trace over the whole thing so, where's my gel pen? I've just got a 0.6 gel pen and I found that this is the best kind of width for all of these kind of uh, debossy sentiment things um, and then you can just I mean this one you could get away with a thicker pen as well but there are just some fine little details in there um, that you might want the finer point of a pen like the little tiny strands on the F are really fine and you can just like trace over the word and you can do this with all eight of the different words as well I mean, you could just deboss it into a coloured card and then draw over the letters with a pen as well. You don't have to have added something nouveau over the top. Or it doesn't have to be a white pen either. It can be a metallic gel pen, it could be a black gel pen, a white gel pen, sparkly one. And then we've got the last little word. And then we can just add them to the gift tag. I think I will use... A little bit of 3D foam but this is a narrower 3D foam so this is only one millimeter and then we can just add these onto the tag And then I can use those leftovers to do the last one. And then we've got happy birthday friend on the top of that one. So I think this month's showcase is, I keep saying this in all the videos, but it's a really nice versatile one because you can go from enormous box with triangular lid enormous box with flat lid which you know there's not too much difference in size on these two it's just literally that square base pyramid on the top of it and um, you can even use the triangle pieces to make a funky looking butterfly uh, you can decorate the side pieces all differently you can go with the proper solid main panels you can use the triangles to decorate the side you can use a half panel um, all sorts of different things um, you can use the words differently to add to your tags as well you can attach the tags to the whole structures you can uh, close it with twine you can do a magnetic closure with the bottom of the box to make a different kind of box as well which is really lovely and you can also make this smaller box too 
and I think that works really nicely I, I really do think that would fit a nice pair of glasses in um, as well and then you can also do your card making with it as well and I think these are really funky kind of designs and because it's such a large gift box the pieces like the decorative panels really do cover the card well like in some of the ones where I've tried to make a 3D die set into just card making you've had to have cut quite a lot of them to fill up even a small card so these ones are such a nice decent size that it's not much die cutting of all of the panels to um, fill a card up which is really nice especially this large one I mean you can go to town with your paper piecing because you've only had to cut the main panel once um, you know to fill the card really so yeah I really hope you enjoyed this up close video I'm really sorry if it was really long I have a feeling it's probably about an hour um, but I hope you enjoyed it and thanks so much for watching and for those of you who have stayed all the way till the end as well and the there will be links to this month's showcase die set in the description box below the video um, and they are affiliate links as well so if you do click on any of them and purchase this die set or anything else from the website it doesn't have to be what the link is for um, just clicking the link opens up that affiliate kind of thing so you can fill your basket with whatever you like um, and then I'll get a small commission of however much you spent at no extra cost to you and it really does make a difference so I know I've said this a lot recently um, but I, I didn't used to say it in videos before and I don't think people realised how much I did appreciate them using my links so I just keep trying to say it so that hopefully everybody who's used my link will actually hear me say thank you so thank you so much and uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!